Hi, my name is Brad Siff. I'm the founder of BioWave. Uh, we're going to talk about BioWave PENS. It's a percutaneous electrical nerve stimulation system. BioWave PENS is comprised of a BioWave Pro stimulator and BioWave percutaneous electrodes. The percutaneous electrode is a micro needle patch technology. There's over a thousand needles. Um, and it's a ster they're sterile, uh, it's a stainless steel needle. Uh, they're 0.75 millimeters in length. Uh, when this is placed uh, on the body, the needles are pressed through the skin and they provide a direct conductive pathway through the skin into deeper tissue. forms in a three to three and a half inch diameter hemisphere beneath each electrode. Uh, that active electrical field encompasses the nerve fibers, the pain fibers, C fibers, the A delta fibers, the sensory fibers, and inhibits action potential propagation on the pain fibers and induces hyposthesia in this volume of tissue. The result clinically is typically um, up to 72 hours of continued pain relief. Typically about seven or eight patients out of 10 respond to this treatment. The average response is about a 75% reduction in pain in the group that responds to, to these treatments. Uh, with a typical treatment regimen is six treatments over a two to three week period. We empirically see that there's a cumulative effect with multiple treatments over time. The device, this, the BioWave Pro stimulator is very simple to use. There is no programming. The signals which emanate from the device are optimized for passing through skin into deep tissue. The body creates the active electrical field in this hemisphere beneath each electrode. Um, the patient controls their own comfort level. So the only thing controlled on the device is the intensity and the patient adjusts the intensity with the plus or minus button. So it's very simple to use. Um, we're going to do a, a treatment now on this patient and we're going to um, uh, first ask the patient to identify where his pain presents. Can you, can you please tell us? Right around here. Okay. okay. So, so we want you to point to the center. I'd like you to palpate and, and uh, let's find the center of where the pain presents. So if you can press mm -hmm. with your, with your right. finger. Here? Mm -hmm. Can you move right. the... Okay. Mm -hmm. And this area? Mm -hmm. Okay, so mark the center of the spot. And then he was also pointing up further on, on his neck. Okay. Okay. So those will be the center of the placement of the location of the two electrodes. Next, we have to clean the skin with an alcohol prep. Much like you would in the way if you were giving an injection to a patient. Um, you clean each location with the alcohol prep um, and then um, you want to clean the other location as well? Yes, sir. And we have to let the alcohol dry. We do not want to place an electrode over wet alcohol. The electrodes cannot touch. There's a minimum of about one inch of spacing between the electrodes. Each electrode package is sterile, single use. It goes, the, the electrodes are placed in Sharps disposal following the treatment. The cup on the back of the electrode is peeled around the perimeter and you try and peel it gently so we do not uh, kink the metal array uh, that's on the electrode. The electrode is centered over the center of those painful locations where the, where the two marks were placed. So we're going to place that down. Just touch the hydrogel perimeter to gel around and now you're going to take your two thumbs together centered over the middle and press very firmly to press all the micro needles through the skin and then you can go three o'clock six o'clock nine o'clock and then twelve o'clock and we're really ensuring that all the micro needles are through that way we're bypassing the impedance of the skin okay now we need to do the same for the uh, second electrode
Very good. So the setup, as you can see, only takes about three, four minutes uh, to identify where the pain presents, clean the skin, place the electrodes, and now um, hooking up the electrodes uh, to the device is very simple. The metal cable um, has a red dot, and this has to face up, and the notch mates with a keyhole at 12 o'clock, and that clicks in place. The blue connectors, either one can be attached to either electrode. Uh, the orientation of the blue connector doesn't matter. It can be placed this way or this way. The orientation doesn't matter. Either one can be plugged into either one. And they just click in place. They purposely stick out this far so you have something to grab onto to pull them apart following the treatment. The power button is on the side of the device. You hold it down until the screen lights up. When the screen lights up, you let go of the button and uh, the screen should read 0.0%. If it reads 0.0, .0 the patient is ready to begin the treatment. The patient starts the treatment by pressing the plus button. As soon as you hit it, it goes up in 0.5% increments and the countdown timer starts counting down. Um, so we will give this to the patient to control and um, the patient can now control their own comfort level by adjusting um, the, the intensity with the plus button on the face of the device. So the patient should take it up so the sensation they feel is as strong as possible, but still comfortable. The body will adapt to the electrical field very quickly in the first uh, two, three, four, five minutes of treatment. As the body adapts to the electrical field and the sensation diminishes, the patient should continue to press the plus button to make the sensation as strong as possible, but still comfortable. Um, the typical treatment level we want the patient to get up to is a minimum of about 17 percent and uh, by the end of the 30 minutes most patients fall between 20 and 30 percent intensity. Some patients may be a little bit more, some a little bit less, but that's a typical active good uh, intensity level for a treatment range. The treatment may feel like a strong pins and needles initially uh, the body creates um, uh, hyposthesia in the volumes of tissue beneath each of the two electrodes. As that hyposthesia develops, it takes about five minutes for the hyposthesia to kick in. That helps mask some of the strong pins and needles initial sensation that the patient feels and the treatment gets even more comfortable. And so it allows the patient to continue to advance the intensity to higher levels during the treatment. Um, at the end of the treatment, the hyposthesia may last anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes, so it'll feel like a light numbness sensation following the treatment. Once that wears off, um, the majority of patients have significant pain relief that can last up to 72 hours following the treatment. My name is Dr. Santi. I'm an internist from Central Florida. I have a, um, a diversified medical clinic where I treat uh, um, all kinds of medical conditions. One of the, the uh, most uh, uh, conditions that I treat is chronic and acute pain. Um, I have been using BioWave for the last several months with very, very good results. Um, I have uh, the conditions that I use it for vary from neck issues, back issues, um, uh, acute pain, chronic pain, um, fasciitis, uh, all kind of musculoskeletal issues that this is used for. Um, my experience with this has been that the majority of my patients on every treatment have received significant improvement in their pain, mobi increased mobility and range of motion. In this uh, particular case, my patient has had neck issues for quite some time uh, and uh, with most of it reflecting in his trap uh, trapezius and rhomboid muscles. As you see, this is where you know we're treating today. Um, I have an assistant that helps me to place this, and uh, I uh, choose to uh, check in on my patients. However, that is not uh, uh, absolutely necessary for each time. Uh, my experience has been that each visit, the patient has had approximately 20-25% improvement in their symptoms. Um, when we re when we reach the certain um, percentage on the machine, 
we record it so the next visit which is usually a couple of days later we in, we uh, restart at that point or a couple of points lower so that we try to maximize the um, the intensity over the six period uh, treatment but the conditions as I said you know include cervical lumbar and chronic you know chronic musculoskeletal issues I have had good long-term results with my patients at this point talking for about a six month experience the uh, the effect is seems to be cumulative on these patients uh, the, when they get to the end of the six treatments they tend to have some good long-term relief from it um, I have had great results on patients from all conditions including post-op pain especially if they've had previous neck or back surgery we try to treat our patients conservatively in our clinic using the least amount of uh, controlled substances. This has been an excellent modality uh, for me. I have also had um, excellent reimbursement from the uh, multiple insurance carriers. At the end of the treatment, the display indicates the maximum intensity reached. Um, this should be noted in the patient treatment form. Um, now you can disconnect the device from the patient uh, you can press the power button to turn the device off, hold it down until the screen goes dark. This co cable is removed by grasping the, um, the metal barrel with two fingers and pulling straight back, and that retracts the little black catches on the side of the connector. Uh, these blue connectors can be, uh, you just pull them straight apart uh, with two hands and they come right apart. Um, to remove the percutaneous electrodes, you peel them gently off the skin, there will be a pink circle the size of the um, the size of the ray, and you can see the dimple pattern of the, the where the needles penetrated the skin. In some cases, there will be a few drops of blood in where those micro needles are. This pink circle typically resolves in 24 to 48 hours. If a patient has very sensitive skin, it may take up to 24 to 48 hours to resolve. And, and that's normal. Uh, there's no, no dressing or uh, anything that has to be done. If there are a few drops of blood, you can take sterile gauze to clean the location. The electrodes are single-use disposable. They're placed together um, and uh, like this, so the needles are covered and then this gets placed in Sharpe's disposal following the treatment. We have two different size sets of percutaneous electrodes for focusing the signals to different parts of the body. In one set, we call the B set, there are two percutaneous electrodes. This, this set, the B set, B really stands for back or bilateral pain, uh, but the two percutaneous electrodes allow us to treat two distinct volumes of tissue. So when, this elect when these electrodes are placed on the skin, we're capturing a three and a half inch diameter hemisphere, half of a sphere beneath each of these two electrodes. So if a patient, for example, has bilateral lumbar pain, we can place one electrode two inches to the right of the spine, a second electrode two inches to the left of the spine, and capture the volumes of tissue beneath each of these percutaneous electrodes. The B-set can also be used to treat radiculopathies. Let's say the patient has um, pain in the buttock and it radiates down the sciatic nerve. So one electrode can be placed directly over the buttock where the pain first presents the most proximal position. The second electrode can be placed over the source or origin of the pain. If it's a herniated disc at L5, this electrode will be placed directly over L5 and we're capturing both the source or origin of the pain as well as where the pain first presents. So that's another way that the B-set can be used. The third way the B-set can be used is to treat large areas of pain. If these two electrodes are one inch apart, whether uh, they're placed this way or a vertical placement like this, essentially we're capturing uh, a six inch by three inch volume of tissue because the hemispheres that uh, are going to overlap internally and we're just capturing a large area of tissue. So those are the three ways that the B set can be used. The E set, E stands for extremity pain, but it's essentially uh, uh, comprised of one percutaneous electrode 
and one non-invasive electrode. So the advantage of doing this is by having a percutaneous electrode with a non-invasive electrode, we have an impedance difference. The impedance is virtually zero at the interface between this electrode and the skin, and it's much, much higher under the surface electrode. So the sensation felt by the patient is much greater under the percutaneous electrode. So the percutaneous electrode is placed over a single point of pain. That's what this set is used for, to treat single points of pain. This, the non-invasive electrode is a much softer, more comfortable sensation that the patient feels underneath it, and it typically is placed directly over a bony prominence, because a bony prominence in particular is a very comfortable place to receive the biowave stimulation. So for example, if we were treating, um, can I use you as a Might model? Be. So if you could turn around with your back to the camera. If we were treating a trigger point in the thoracic area of the back and say this was the center of where the pain presents, we would place the percutaneous electrode right over the center of the pain. The bony prominence comfortable location for this electrode would be the front corner gets placed just posterior to the AC joint on the top of the shoulder, and this electrode is run at an angle along the spine of scapula. This is a very comfortable place to take stimulation. The patient is only limited in how high they can advance the intensity by what they can tolerate under the percutaneous electrode here. Because this electrode is so comfortable, uh, the patient is never limited in how high they can go up by what they feel under the larger non-invasive, the rectangular non-invasive electrode. They're only limited by the percutaneous electrode. And so we have a quick reference guide um, for biowave pens treatments, and this is what we use as our teaching tool um, uh, when a, a new customer is set up. And in this guide, we show the B set percutaneous electrodes, the E set percutaneous electrode, and then we have 40 photos for all the different parts of the body that we can treat, ranging from lumbar to the thoracic, uh, cervical, and extremities as well. And this is uh, kind of the cheat sheet to allow the, uh, the healthcare providers to come up the learning curve very quickly and makes this a very easy to use uh, treatment uh, modality. Contraindications for biowave pens include um, electrically implanted devices, so you cannot use biowave pens if a patient has an implanted pacemaker or cardiac defibrillator. If they have an implanted spinal cord stimulator or peripheral nerve stimulator and the device can be remotely turned off, then biowave pens can be used. Um, electrodes, can, uh, you cannot use biowave pens on patients prone to seizure, like epileptics. You cannot place a percutaneous electrode directly over the heart on the anterior of the chest. You cannot place electrodes on the front or side of the neck or on top of the head. Um, electrodes can be placed directly on the back of the neck right up to the base of the skull. Um, uh, any type of metal hard, internal metal hardware from total joints to pin screws, plates, and clips is totally fine. Uh, those patients can use uh, biowave pens. Um, skin electrodes cannot be placed on broken skin, on rashy skin, over wounds. Skin should be intact. An electrode can be placed right up next to uh, an incision on a post-operative patient. Uh, once that incision is healed, an electrode can be placed, a percutaneous electrode can be placed over scar tissue. It can be placed over tattoos. If a patient has jewelry on, the jewelry should be removed if it's anywhere near the vicinity of where the electrodes are going to be placed. Please read the user manual for all of the detailed information on the use and operation of the device.